Hi, in this lesson we'll be talking about the yield keyword. Yield is very used and it's very important to understand when working with Ruby on Rails. Similarly with the called the call method, yield lets us or allow us to execute a code of of um, of a block within a method, but there are some differences, big differences, that we will be covering in this lesson. Let's see how it works. First, I'm going to create a file called blocks2.rb. Okay, here we are in our workspace, and let's create a new program with a method similar to the last lesson. Just say say hello we receive a block block and let's print hello world I'm going to yield here and then print hello again and we're calling the say hello method I'm going to create a block And inside here, I'm going to print inside of the block. Okay, so what's going to happen is that we're going to print hello world first. We're going to yield, so it means we're going to execute this code of the block. And we're going to print this text and then this text. Hello again. So let's see how it works. And print let's go to kblocks2.rb um, as you can see exactly that happened now the, the first thing you may be wondering is why we should we will be using yield instead of the call method so well the first reason is because yield can be executed the code mm, several times we can call it more than one time and it's going to run twice for example here i added yield twice and we run twice this code block i mean this block of code but it, it doesn't look very useful on its own so let's make something more interesting so i'm going to create another file how blocks 3.rb and what we're gonna do here uh, blocks is to print the numbers from 0 to 9 so let's see let's see let's see how it goes uh, the numbers I'm going to receive the block Let's initialize an i variable in zero. Then let's make it while while uh, i less than ten. Well, actually, we don't need to use this. And that's another of the big differences of using yield. So look, I'm going to make numbers equals ten. So numbers. Okay, great. And and inside of the while, I'm just going to yield i and make an increment to the i. Then I'm going to show numbers and make a do do and block. And here's one of the big differences of using colon yield. You can see I yield the i variable, and now this is some, something similar when you send an argument to a method. In this case, I'm going to send this i as argument to the block. As it is, I'm going to call a number. I'm going to print here. So inside of the block, I can make whatever I want with the number variable. 
I can reassign it and make any anything I want inside of this block with that variable. Well, I'm just going to print it. So we are calling yet yield several times using the while loop. Also, you can see you can notice we didn't we did not ask for a block in the arguments of the method. And also you can see we just sent these and we are receiving an argument in the block statement. So using yield we can send arguments to the blocks. So let's execute this. And as you can see, we've just printed the numbers from 0 to 9. And you should be wondering how does this, does this yield know how, which block to call. So it's pretty easy because we are calling this function or this method and we are sending it a block. So how it didn't receive any block, it knows that the block is the one we, we defined here. This is just some of the magic, the magic of Ray of Ruby, but we are going to go depth in the about this topic in another lessons. But so far, we just need to understand that we could send an argument to this block. Also, we executed several times and so on. So now you might be wondering what happened if I modify the value of number. Maybe let's say I multiply it by two. What happens if I do this? I'm modifying the value number. Will this modify the i variable that it was called from? Let's see what happened. And as you can see, anything else, anything happened. So, why, when I modify the number variable that I receive here from the yield, is modifying the i itself? This is because same as the, as the blocks. Of the, I mean, same as the methods, blocks also have their, their own scope. So methods have their own scope as well as blocks. So I modify the number variable, but I'm inside of the scope of the block. So I can make any modifications to this argument, but the i is, going to, is not going to be modified because i is outside of the scope of the block. So this means that any modification I perform to variables and constants that I receive in the block won't affect my previous code. So let's see, let's see it in action. I'm going to create another file called blocks4.rb. Now I'm going to def print name. So let's say print enter your name. Now I'm going to yield the name. Oh no, sorry. And it's going to be equals to, to get chum. Also, I'm going to yield the name. And then I'm going to print put nice, nice to meet you name so we're calling these print name i'm going to create a block here and let's see what happened when i modify the name okay i receive a name argument so let's see what happened when i modify the name to something else blah blah so i received the name here from the yield and I modified here so it it should modify here too. Well, it won't modify anything since name is outside of the, of the scope of the method, even when the variables have their the same name. So both have the same name, we are modifying them, but they are an, on different scopes, so it won't affect anything. So blocks four. Sebastian. Okay, so we yield this, we executed this, 
reassign something here inside of the block but that didn't affect the name variable we have inside of uh, we have within the the method so this is these are the basics of working with blocks in the next lesson we'll be talking on creating real life examples using blocks in ruby and if you have doubts or just want to say hello leave, the, leave us a comment and we will love to hear ab about you as always don't forget to follow me on twitter as bastion Belandia. follow us on race karate as, uh, in facebook and twitter and always keep an eye on racekarate.com where you will find the transcript of this video and thanks for subscribing to our channel we're reaching the, the end of this stage so don't forget that we are going to make a short quiz in the next lesson see you next lesson